famous than I am. I've been a lot more behind the scenes. No, no, no. You're amazing. And Brad, I love you. There's very few people I trust with my life. I, I trust you with my life. And I know we don't get to hang out all the time and do that. But when you build a genuine, authentic connection with somebody and your souls are like, I trust you and love you 100%. So whatever you want to talk about, I'm all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. I appreciate that so much. I, I really wanted to set the stage as to like, what inspired you to really go down the paths that you have? You're one of the biggest humanitarians that I know. Hear it in the story. If you could share some of those whys with the whole group of who's going to watch this, because your next mission is, it's still humanitarian based, but is like totally in a tech lane ahead of the curve before any trend. And I know that you mentioned it also on your website, but this is all what people don't, and look, I'm going to say this in case nobody's ever said this about you. What people don't understand is that you really care about humans. Like you have gone beyond the call of duty. So thank you so much. And I don't want to ruin that narrative. You know it better than I do. You're in your own skin. I get a chance to talk to you every once in a while because you're just so amazing. Everybody's pulling at you. But to your point, please share. I, 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 I am honored that we're having this conversation. It's been a long time coming. Well, Fred, I think when you know, you notice. I know what it's like to be hungry. I know what it's like to be lonely. I know what it's like to want to end my life. I know what it's like to need help and not have anybody there. You know, as a kid, there were, I, I started selling rocks at five. I would paint them and sell pet rocks so that we could have food. I was hungry. Uh, I, you know, I had to find ways to make ends meet. My mom's fantastic and I love her to death, but she was a single mom working three minimum wage jobs. And so we, we started working at an early age and, and I knew what it was like to be teased because you had to wear Kmart clothes and, and you just didn't have much. And so I ended up getting a job at 13. I had really bad teeth and, and I got a job so that I could afford to buy braces because I was ashamed to smile. And I remember going around just like wanting to keep my mouth shut because I didn't have any confidence. And that changed a lot of things for me. And then when I was 15, like the big turning point when people talk to me and it's like, why, why are you so concerned about other people? I was 15 years old. I came up, up on a, a horrible motorcycle accident. I reached out and we didn't have a cell phone said, I'm old. I'm old. And I sent my best friend who was with me and I said, go get help. And I was with this guy who had had a horrible motorcycle accident holding his hand and he's struggling in a bad way. And I'm just praying to God, like, please save this guy. I need help. I'm 15 and it's getting darker and nobody's coming and I can see life slipping away from him. And I finally, I was desperate and I ran out to the road and because he had crashed in a field and I was like waving people down and multiple cars just drove by me. I was so hurt. I could not believe that the people would, leave us in our time of need like a kid begging for help on the side of the street i didn't know what to do this guy was dying in my arms and people wouldn't stop and i'm like what kind of humans don't stop why won't you stop and help me and i remember just feeling so alone and so sad and i finally stood in the road and i made a car stop i stood in the road and i was like please stop and this family got out and they were nice and they came over and I ran over just in time and I held this guy's hand and he died in my arms. And I decided at that moment, me as a kid, I would never leave anyone who needed help. No matter what, even if I, I, I stop at every accident, if nobody's there, why? Because it matters. I do, nobody dies alone at the hospital. I volunteer for seven years. We don't come in alone. We shouldn't die alone. I sit with patients because I feel like sometimes everybody can do something. The only thing you have to, to do to make a difference is being willing to be there. So offering your hand, your heart, your ears, a smile. So, you know, that, that's me. It's been, it's been super important along the way. And I found that every time I help, my heart heals. And I find purpose and I find meaning in this journey because this life can be very lonely. 
but it's beautiful and I love it. And I'm so blessed that I want to make sure nobody ever feels alone or lost or unseen or unvalued. And I'll do everything within my power to do that because it matters. Yeah, definitely. You, you've you impacted my life from day one. <laughs> just how you just shine, just shine like a bright diamond, you know, and that hasn't changed with you. You know, like, Certain people get bitter. I've watched you get better. And it's just, man, Brandy, I just, you are fireball, you know? And it's that drive that just, I'm just like, you talk about, you trusted me with your life. I trust you with my life. You know, I know when we first met, you you watched me go through some, go through, go through some really tough things because, you know, as a humanitarian, people don't understand. It's just like, I'm not getting paid a lot to risk my life. <laughs> yes it's the military and you know it's one of those things where i i i learn a lot just by observing and studying you yeah but and people should know fred and i we were in our advanced individual training together i was in the army he was in the marine corps we did our separate boot camp and then we came together um at fort meade maryland for denfos the defense information school and we just became a really tight group and and our friendship was strong and that was in 1996 yep i joined the army in 95 we we went through our training in 96 so do the math that's been 28 years ago of friendship and we both have been through a lot and grown a ton yeah and what do you think it is though about your mind's eye like like what was it that really Cause you've done some amazing things. You've, you had it. Well, I didn't have a top secret clearance. You had a top secret clearance. And like, how did you still keep your humanitarian side of you? Even, I mean, you've been to, I think Bosnia, Kosovo, you've been, you've been all over, right? Yeah. I, I've been over to Kosovo. I've done some humanitarian missions on my own. I have a nonprofit. I was a surrogate mother. I adopted a baby through foster care. Like my heart has always been in, in service. I don't know. There's this thing called the helper's high. And when you're helping other people, you feel better about life and about yourself. And so it's a little bit almost selfish to be able to help. But there's something about doing something for people that can't be repaid. You know, and I, I did my first humanitarian mission. It cost me $1,200 for a plane ticket. I'm 19 years old. And it was very hard for me to do. And, and I was able to go over to Kosovo with a, a photographer and we reunited a family that was devastated and destroyed by war. I mean, they watched their family members be killed. The boys fled into the mountains and then all of a sudden they're at a, a refugee camp and the mom and the sister had made their way to Chicago or to Cleveland. And we went back to find these boys and bring them back to the United States. And now I see them with their families and thriving. And I just, I'm so thankful that I've been able to have a part of that. I think God trusts us to be his hands and eyes and feet on the earth and there's just something so wonderful about knowing that what you do matters money's great we all need it it's important i love business but i love people more than anything and there's no amount of money that can ever replace the impact you can have with people whoa wow so it leads me to a, a a question what do you see that other people miss Oh, that's a good question. I was trained by the best. And what do I see that other people miss? Um, I, I, I think sometimes I'm not looking just at the person. I'm looking into their soul. I've always noticed eyes. And I think we all have the ability to look at somebody and to gloss over. But I feel like I try to see really into their soul to what, what makes us human, what makes us tick, what, what connects us. And one of the biggest things that's been discouraging over the years is there's so much contention. And I think there's so much more in this life than that connects us and that bonds us and seals us in love than that destroys us. And I, I think that's the one thing I look for. And it's funny because I almost joke about it, but I've really tried to shift my my awareness and my subconscious over the last few years, even when I travel and I'm at the airport, I, I try not to be on my phone and I look at people and I'll, you know, you're going up the escalator or going by 
And I look at each person and I smile and I try to look into their eyes and I think in my head and I say it in my head. I love you. I love you. I love you. Everybody I pass because I feel like I'm trying to shift that energy and just kind of let it flow. One, it's good for me. But two, we don't know what anyone's going through. And when I volunteered at the hospital and, and I was doing critical care and trauma and I would sit with people and we'd turn off life support, I had a lady who she'd been married like 40 years. She'd never gone to the store by herself. She had been, that was her and her husband's thing. And she she left after we turned off life support on her husband. And she was just devastated. And she goes, I have to go to the store tonight by myself. And I just thought, you know what? She's going to get in her car. She's going to drive distracted. She's probably going to walk slow and annoy people. She might cut you off. She's going to go to the store and have her cart in the middle of the aisle. And it really came to me that none of us know what anyone else is ever going through. When I almost lost my daughter to suicide, we were too ashamed to talk about it because of the stigma. And we just buried that. And I still had to show up for things. And nobody knew that how much pain and suffering I was in. So that experience at the hospital and my own personal stuff and just my whole life taught me this. And I literally tell myself this 50 times a day. <laughs> Choose kindness, give grace, lead with love. Choose kindness, give grace, lead with love. When I'm on the freeway and somebody makes me mad, I just say, choose kindness, give grace, lead with love. We don't know what they're going through. None of us know any of that. And what I've really, really discovered is the way people treat you, it's not about you. It's a reflection of what they're going through. And when you can shift the narrative that if somebody's a jerk to you or rude or disrespectful, it's not about you. It's a reflection of what they're dealing with. It's a reflection of what they're going through. And I had a guy who was treating me horribly and I was ready to give him a piece of my mind. I was like, you don't get to talk to me this way. Who do you think you are? I'm, I'm Brandy. I'm a train killing machine. I'm coming over. And I was getting all worked up. This was about probably seven or eight years ago. And as I'm walking over to him, like, I'll show you who's boss. I get up to him and, and the spirit was so strong. And it was like, don't, don't give him a piece of your mind, Brandy, give him a piece of your heart. And when I went to open my mouth to say, what's your problem? Which is what I really wanted to say with maybe some colorful words. <laughs> I said, instead, are you okay? And this guy looked at me who had been treating me like crap and everyone else terribly for a while. And when I said, are you okay? His eyes teared up and he said, actually, no, I'm not. Today's the anniversary of my wife's death. And my kids were struggling so hard this morning. It's been a really hard morning. So I'm sorry. And I said, I'm sorry too. And I got emotional and he got emotional and we just stood there and I just hugged him and we both cried. And I've thought about that often, how different that moment could have been if I went over and just really laid it to him. So I would encourage people, you know, instead of giving people a piece of your mind, to give them a piece of your heart, choose kindness, give grace, lead with love, because you just don't know. And I'd always rather err on the side of love and care. Wow. Wow. You just mentioned some very powerful things. Would you mind going into your nonprofit a little bit? Yeah. So in 2015, I created Good Deed Revolution. And our whole mission there is I've had, you know, so many years in broadcasting and in media. And nine out of 10 of the stories I covered were devastating. You know, like if, if we didn't get PTSD in the military, definitely got it working in television news because I showed up at people's worst days. Nine out of 10 of them were somebody was murdered, somebody was killed, their house burned down. Uh, they're being charged with something. It was just, I show up on the worst day of people's lives. And I remember I went to a, a murder-suicide where this father had just taken his ex-wife's life and the three little kids watched it. And I was sitting on the curb just holding these kids until help could come. And it was very sad. And I thought, you know, those the, the one story out of 10 I get to do this beautiful stories the best day it's like the ends of both spectrum it's like yes you won the lottery oh yes you're amazing you got this huge award or whatever it is so i'd have one of those and nine of these devastating heartbreaking if it bleeds it leads type stories and um so i founded my nonprofit in 2015 and it's called good deed revolution the whole point of it was to take 
to, to do good deeds, acts of kindness, and pay it forward and share them on video to inspire people around the globe. And we have some amazing stories. We're talking, we have Tom Cruise get involved. How cool is that? The power of the media and the power of social media. But we were doing these good deeds, acts of kindness, pay it forward. We would share them on video to inspire and motivate other people to do it around the world. And we did that for a while. And then in 2019, I almost lost my 12-year-old to suicide. And it was devastating because I had just built this studio. I had just adopted a baby. I had just been a surrogate. Like I had all these things going on, but I was a single mom. And there's so much stigma and shame. I was like afraid to talk about it. So was she. And I remember sitting here thinking to myself how ashamed and embarrassed and sad and that my daughter would rather be dead than be with me. And these are just lies. These these are just the stigma because that's not how mental health works. But we buried it as a dark secret for two years. And then in 2021, it happened again at 14. And she, you know, she had said she wouldn't do it again. Thankfully, her friend had the courage to call 911. Police showed up at our door. We got her to the hospital in time. But when we got there to the primary children's, they didn't even have a bed. They had had so many kids attempt suicide that day. We're talking like almost a dozen. And I was crying in the hospital and one of the doctors came up and 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 he was emotional too. He's like, I don't know what's going on. We got to do something. And I knew I couldn't do the same thing and expect a different result. And we didn't know for almost, it was almost two days if she was going to have long-term disability, if she was going to come out of it completely, like what the status would be. And I was praying the Heavenly Father, please just save my daughter. I'll do anything. And actually, it was the the second day I was in my car and I told you I did spiritual care and nobody dies alone. I've been through a lot of hard things. I've helped a lot of people through similar situations. But when it's somebody you love and especially your baby, I was like, just, I was so lost. And I got on my personal Facebook page and I said, I need help. I don't know if my child's going to live. And I know some of you have been through it. Please help. That video blew up. It was the most vulnerable I'd ever been. Got 12,000 views overnight. I had hundreds of messages in my inbox from my friends um, all over. But my friends at NBC called me and said, hey, Brandy, will you share your story on the news? I was like, no, 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 no. To personal, private, painful. I don't want to talk about it. So I told him no. But that day I was praying, like, please save my daughter. I'll do anything, God. And um I was very informed. I was prompted, told, inspired, heard a voice, whatever you want to say, the universe. But I believe God told me, Brandy, I'll give you a second chance. There won't be a third. What are you going to do? Shortly after my child came to, and I, I asked, I said, are you glad you're alive or do you really wish you would have died this time? And she said, mom, I didn't really want to die, but it was too late. And that's what shifted People don't want to die. They just want to kill what hurts them. They want to kill the pain and, and they don't know how to cope. And so, you know, she was in the hospital for a while. She was an inpatient. We did a bunch of stuff. And and two weeks later, my friends at NBC called me again and they said, Brandy, this is a huge problem and nobody will talk to us. Huge problem. Nobody will talk to us. And I thought, gosh, if I'm terrified and I'm military veteran. I worked in TV news. I'm used to being in front of the camera. I'm used to doing the hard things. If I'm terrified, what does a normal person feel like? And I just made a promise and it's this a test. And if not me, who? So I reluctantly did the story on the news. And I said, if you're watching this, please stop what you're doing and go check on your child and ask them point blank if they're suicidal. I've learned and studies show honest questions get honest answers. And I would, I would encourage anybody who's listening or watching this to do the same thing. Check on the people you love because you won't plant an idea. Either they are or they are. So after the story aired, and I'm sorry this is long, my phone, I got a message and this father said, you just saved my daughter's life. I said, what do you mean? He goes, I watched your story on the news. I ran, I ran to check on her when you said that. I got to her room. She had already written a suicide note. She was in the process of trying to end her life right there. We are in the hospital. Thank you. And then another family reached out and said, thank you for being vulnerable. We saw your story on the news. We talked to our 15-year-old son. He confessed he was going to end his life this weekend. We're getting him help. So that was, you know, three years ago, almost exactly. And that led 
me to where we are now. So I shifted Good Deed Revolution. We created an initiative called Promise to Live. And I thought if my story on local news could they hit, I don't know, 10, 20, 30,000 people, if it could say two that I know of that reached out to me, what if we could reach 200,000 or 2 million? And I remember thinking about Live Aid. I was just a kid in 85, but I remember thinking everybody came together for a common cause and it was for the starving children in Africa. Well, right now, the biggest problem facing the globe, and I'm part of the grand challenge, I'm on the I'm on the chair for synergies, is mental health, suicide, addiction. And everybody's coming together saying, how do we solve this problem? Well, it's epic. That's why it's a grand challenge. And then they said, we got to stop the stigma. So I created a program. And the first year we brought a three-hour family-friendly show. We brought singers, dancers, celebrities, survivors. And I just thought, I'm just going to bring resources in one place. And we reached 160,000 people. And last year we did it again on September 10th, World Suicide Prevention Day. We reached about 400,000 people. So we have a campaign globally every 40 seconds. Somebody dies by suicide. We want people to make the promise to live, the number to live.org. And essentially, we're asking people everywhere, and I'm asking you, make the promise to live. Promise that if you ever find yourself in this dark place, if you ever don't want to live, if you're ever struggling, just promise you'll reach out to someone, a friend, a family member, a trusted resource like NAMI or AFSP, or call or text 988. And there's legit studies, Fred, that say if we make a promise ahead of time, we're up to 60% more likely to keep it. And sometimes we don't love ourselves enough to want to stick around. But I love you enough that if you made me make a promise, I'm going to think about it. And so we ask people, it takes 25, 30 seconds to go online and make a promise to live right now. And then we say, share it. The first promise is for you. The second one is for everyone you love. So make the promise to live. Share it on your social media. That helps create a safe place and start conversations and save lives, stop stigma. So we have that. We have our concert series. We're doing our pocket hugs. These are amazing. I love these things. It's it's called the Promise to Live Pocket Hug. You keep it in your pocket. On the back, it says, when times are tough and you don't know what to do, here's a hug from me to you. And it says, call or text 988. A lot of people don't know about 988. It's a 911 for mental health. You can call or text 24-7. So we want people to have hope, resources, and a reminder every time they touch this that they're loved and that they matter and that the world is better because they exist. Wow. Brandy. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) It's my pleasure, friend. I I feel so blessed. I can't even tell you. Um, I'm one of the lucky ones. I got a second chance with my kid. I work with so many people including amazing people who sit on my team that lost their son, their daughter, their mother, their brother. And I got a second chance and I'm happy to report for the first time in five years, my child is thriving. She's doing so good. She's graduating a year early. She's going to college. She's smiling and laughing and happy. And I have so much peace and gratitude. Every day I look at her. Da Vinci said this best. He said, I've been impressed with the sense of urgency. Knowing is not enough, we must apply. Being willing is not enough, we must do. I am looking for the doers. I wake up every day with the sense of urgency because I know lives depend on it. And I have so much gratitude that I get to hug my daughter each day. And, and she's still here with us. And I don't want anyone to go through this. And if they're going through it, we want to help. We want to prevent it. Yeah. Wow. So with that being said, let's take your mind's eye because this is what really drives you. If, if, if people don't understand that this is what drives you, then they're probably watching the wrong thing right now. <laughs> How? Passion. Huh? It's my passion. It's legitimately your passion. How have you been able to take your passion and still bring that message forward? Because I see it in everything that you do, personally, professionally, intellectually, spiritually, financially, like all of those dynamics. You are like, oh, and she's also very weapons, small weapons qualified and trained. Don't let the smile fool you. She's a trained killer. <laughs> I still teach self defense and firearms, just for the record. Yeah. 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 So please, 
how in your mind's eye were you able to just take this passion and transform it into the powerhouse that we call brandy and really transform the world with everything that you're doing because we haven't even talked about the ai stuff that you're doing and i don't want to make this too hard of a pivot at all this is your this is your mind i i, I really want to walk through it well you know friend nothing else in life matters if you don't want to live and so for me, this is a foundation of everything. Both you've got to find meaning and purpose in your life, even whatever it is that you're dealing with, with the people you love. When you're in crisis, the chaos eliminates any progress. And so I find passion and purpose and meaning in, in helping people want to be alive and finding reasons to live and finding their purpose. And so with my production company. I mean, of course we all have to pay the bills. So yeah, we, we do commercials, training, education, product videos, all the stuff, but we also do PSAs and we do social media videos that connect and, and help people. We do a lot of videos for promise to live here. And I'm able to do that because I own this company and it allows me to do it. Now the new company is called Dan can it's digital authentication, uh, network certified non-negotiable. In a world with AI, deep fake, synthetic, manipulated media, stuff we've been dealing with for a long time, but things that are really going public right now, there's a huge crisis of, of you can no longer believe anything you hear, see, or read. And back in the day, I remember when the Twin Towers were collapsing and I was deployed to Kosovo and I was watching it and I just finished doing... Um, being on the White House press pool and interviewing the president and all this stuff. And I'm running a team and I'm back there editing. And all of a sudden, one of my soldiers comes running. Hard to start that a plane crashed into the Twin Towers. You've got to see it. And I remember at the time I ran in there, we're watching this unfold on the TV and Tom Brokaw is talking. I'm there with one of my um, officers and I'm just devastated because I'm watching the world change and shift before my eyes. And it was so powerful in my heart. I knew that things would never be the same. I knew from that moment that life as we knew it would pivot. And Tom Brokaw says, as the tower collapses, he says, America is now at war. And my commander is sitting next to me and he goes, oh, I hate how the media sensationalizes everything. And I was blown away because yes, they do, but no, this wasn't a time when that was actually happening. And I said, sir, we're being attacked by enemies unknown on our own soil. Of course we're at war and we don't know who we're fighting. And that's where we are right now with cyber criminals, cyber attacks, all of these people coming at us from every angle, from every avenue that they possibly can. And we can't believe what we see on TV and we can't believe what we hear because things are being manipulated in political elections. There's sextortion. There's kids all over and not just kids, adults who are ending their lives because somebody comes on and, and they hack into their system and they manipulate a photo and they put them in pornography. Taylor Swift's dealing with this. There's all of these issues happening. So what we've created is authentication. I mean, they did a deep fake detection challenge, Fred, several years ago, not several, a couple of years ago. They brought in 2,000 global leaders who focus strictly on AI and manipulated media. They're the experts in the world. They had this million dollar prize. They said, everybody come together. Your job is to spot the fake videos. So they did this. They did this. They did this. The number one winning team, the person who got the million dollar grand prize, guess how many he got right? What percentage? Um, Maybe 30, 40 percent? He got 65, which is still failing. And this was a couple of years ago when when it was a little bit easier to spot. Every minute, every second that we sit here, technology is improving with machine learning and just with all the algorithms. There's criminal networks sitting back there. A father lost his 17 year old who had been like this amazing kid and all star and everything. He got hacked into on his system, thought he was talking to a girl took a picture and whether you take a picture or whether they manipulate a picture doesn't matter because they can put you into any position like they did Taylor Swift. And within three hours, this kid had killed himself because of the fear and, and the stigma. So what we're doing is while you can, it, it's virtually impossible and it will be impossible to tell what is real and what is fake. We're making it a hundred percent 
possible to tell what is real. So the way it works is companies will authenticate all of their content. So you authenticate it before you release it. It's distributed on a global network. You have an authentication tool on your site. And if anybody edits or alters anything, one pixel, one frame, any metadata, it's going to show that it's been altered if it's been um, authenticated. So there will come a point in time, right now we're appealing to the early adapters, people who care about reputation management and, and influencers and people with big followings. We want this with political elections. I actually talked to one of the world's leading strategists in the political field, and he, he consults globally. And he's like, this is incredible technology, but I don't want it to get out there. I said, what are you talking about? You don't want it out there. He goes, I'm one of the ones that manipulates the media. We want to mess with people's heads because we don't want them to know the truth about the other people. And that kind of blew my mind because we live in this deceptive world that's just out to get what they want to get and we're their pawns. So it literally is going to come to a place where somebody, you know, they can send uh, blackmail videos of you in child porn. They can send videos of, of your voice you know, doing anything and with one minute, a dollar app, I could take anybody's voice on the planet and have them say anything I wanted them to say. And the problem is people don't know, and especially baby boomers, they have no idea because they grew up in a world where you could believe it if you saw it or read it or heard it. And now we can. So we're focused on education. We're focused on authentication. We're focused on truth in a deceptive world. Dan can authenticate, Dan can validate. When others can't, Dan can. And that's what we're trying to push out there. Man, you know, Brady, I, I'm really thankful we're having this conversation. Um, I don't know if you knew this about me, but it's one of the reasons why I got out the Marine Corps because I almost got killed uh, several times out in the combat zone. You know how that can get treacherous. And uh, the stuff, I don't know, if, I don't know, I don't know if you were in that class with me, but one of the instructors said, and, and this is the capacity of, of what you're saying and how profound it really is. Because even on your video, you talk about how we were talking about this in the 90s. I'm getting goosebumps talking about it because we were talking about this stuff in the 90s. You're like, I was at the war college talking about this. <laughs> you're yeah. Like a, yeah. You're like a whiz kid going through it. Not even, not even in your 20s or just getting there, right? And this was, and, and the thing that I learned was, the microphone's always on and always act as if you're talking to 5 billion people. Hence the reasons why we got into broadcasting, right? But the part that they didn't <laughs> was the part that you're talking about. They lightly gl glossed over it. Like, you know, like we were using power MacBooks before they were like really public. We were doing like Photoshop 1.0. That's where I got the delineation right there because they told us to not alter one pixel, but we learned how to do it in school, but we were mandated in order to not do it. And now you fast forward to us having this conversation and you're literally on the leading edge of like this conversation. Girl, how the heck did you get there? It blows my mind, right? Because I look back at it and I remember like part of my job at the war college is we, our job was to manipulate the media because we were working with the global leaders and we were trying to show them the power that the media has to take whatever you say and not just through AI or deep fake, which are huge issues, but to edit what you say out of context, which we've seen happen. And this has been a big problem. And there's been a lot of people waking up to, wow, the media can be manipulated. And don't get me wrong. I, I have a love hate. I love the media and I love the power of it. And I love my history and, and my profession. While it's good, it can burn hot. And, and you just have to be super careful. And we're actually hoping to team up with the TV stations and the, the news stations, everybody out there for podcasts, because we can authenticate podcast, audio, video, photos, any documents every day, 400 million pieces of content are uploaded on social media every day. So we want people to protect themselves and it's getting more and more important. And, and I want people to be educated to know that if somebody sends you a, 
a picture of somebody in a crime. I, I mean, we saw that with Donald Trump. We saw that with the Pope. We've seen that with multiple people where they're being edited and altered Tom Cruise on TikTok into these ridiculous scenes or things. And some of them are ridiculous. Some of them are very believable. The TikTok fake account, deep fake account, had 10 million followers who all thought it was Tom Cruise. And he could say anything he wanted to say. And imagine the influence if he said, go out and vote for this person, or I believe this, or X, Y, Z. Like, we have to be more vigilant than ever, and we're going to have to question everything, which stinks. Because we want to live in a, in a world of trust and authenticity, but it's hard to be trusting and authentic when everything around you is inauthentic and, and you don't even know what's real. So we're trying to prevent that and say, okay, if you authenticate your content before you release it, or if this business authenticates it, you might say, yeah, that's a deep fake video. Go to our site and, and drag and drop the video in. And if it's our original video, it's going to give you a green thumbs up. If it's not, you get a red you know, X or thumbs down. And it's going to tell you that it's been manipulated. That's it. That's the only way to know. You're not going to be able to tell AI deep fake edited. Nope. Your word against my word. When I was a kid, my cousins were fighting. And it was so funny because one of them broke something and dad came in and he was all bad. He's like, which one of you broke this? I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. They're going back and forth. And finally, the one little girl goes, God knows who's lying and it's not me. And it was kind of funny to witness that because I was like, yeah, it's the other kid. I mean, that's a bold statement. And when it comes to AI, deep faith, manipulated media, there's maybe only one person who knows what the truth is, but I'm not sure he's going to come and vouch for it. So in lieu of that authentication, we have Dan Ken. You're a totally baller. I, I, I always will hug your brain forever. <laughs> so. Yeah. You know, it's 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 funny you say this. Like, this is a real relevant conversation for me because my mind's eye, it's one of the reasons why I shied away from broadcasting and journalism for so long. And uh, now it's here. I don't have any other choice but to face and confront it, finally. Plus, the other thing with me personally, Brandy, is that I don't know if you knew this, but, like, I wasn't properly scrubbed down. You know, like, I get secret clearances and all that stuff like that. So I, I still... I had asked them November of 2020 because they finally reached out to me after me. Hey, huh, we need to talk. I'm like, yeah, I know. Because I have to. Now, now you can't shut me up. So my question to you would be, <laughs> since you've been on the pro side of it, I've kind of been behind the scenes on some insane business stuff. Where do you delineate the difference so that people can still have their humanity and still communicate? Because that's what we really want to do. But still have the ability to... Is there such thing as privacy these days? Is it is it completely gone out the window? Do we just I mean, once we subscribe to social media, that's it. Like, you know, I'm 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 kind of old school, but I'm also, as you as you know, ahead of the curve too with AI. So it's it's for me, I'm in that weird spot, you know? Yeah. Help my brother out. It it's rough because I was talking to Nate Gab. He was on our panel for Silicon Slopes, and he's the uh, founder or Nate Randall, he's the CEO of Gab. And he said, you know, we live in a world where we're more connected than ever, but we're disconnected. And it used to be the cool thing was to be on your phone and to connect through the internet and connect through social media. This is where malicious things can happen and bad actors can form. So now it's like when you talk about real and truth and where we need to be face to face, in person, it's almost getting to that point, which is what humans crave anyway. Like a lot of what we're doing is with my friend Richard Godfrey and his book and his training, Connection Cures Contention. Connection cures a lot of things. So by connecting in real life, which isn't always, you know, like we can have this conversation without technology right now. So it's important that we're having this, but having the trust, having the authenticity, having direct connections, but you just almost have to be unfortunately skeptical you have to be a little bit skeptical with everything now and it and it stinks and especially if you're a, a target you know if you're a ceo if you're an influencer if you're wealthy there's a lot of things that you have to worry about and it just it, it stinks to be honest i wish there was an easy answer but there's really not it'll be authenticate your stuff and if anybody comes after you like even what people don't know and if i have a platform which i do thank you fred 
Um, grandparents getting a call from your granddaughter saying, Grandma, I got arrested or my car's getting towed. Can you send me money? They're, every time you get one of those calls where you're like, hello, hello, they're recording your voice and they're using it to potentially do scams. There was one in Arizona where the daughter was, the mom was calling her daughter saying, hey, my car is getting towed. Can you just send me some money? They need this right now and I don't have it. And it was not the mom's voice. I, it was the mom's voice, but it wasn't the mom. So people have to call. You have to call, you have to reach out, you have to double check things. You have to look for those who are really going the extra mile to authenticate. Dang it. That's where we come in. We get out. <laughs> also, note the self. Book a flight to go see Brandy. <laughs> you out. I'm actually coming to LA this month. I'll be up in a few weeks. I'll, I'll be after we're, it. We're all over, Fred. Like, my main thing is I want to. So people always say, like, how do you have the energy to do everything you do? How do you stay so busy? I've never met anyone more busy than you. I'm like, when you're doing things with passion and with purpose, and I feel so much urgency, people need to know the truth. They need to protect themselves. If you've ever been accused of something you didn't do, and I've had that happen, and maybe even somebody says, I'm going to send this to everybody in your phone, or I'm going to put this out on the media, or I'm going to do something, and they've got your picture, or they're accusing you of something. There's a company that lost $25 million because of a deep fake video from their CFO. This was just a few weeks ago. So for me, I literally feel like lives are on the line. There's a sense of urgency in everything I do. I want to bring truth to the world. I want to bring hope. I want to bring resources and YOLO. There's all I, you know, you only live once. I got to take advantage and get as much out there as I can. Brandy, I know I'm older than you, but I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> Join me, Fred. I'm so glad we get to work together. Yeah, I'm truly honored and thankful and very happy. And just send everybody off with some love and some hugs and really how they can reach out to you. I'm going to drop some stuff. Of course, this is going to be on YouTube as well. I just want to make sure that I can start doing my due diligence and just help a brother out. Like, just help me to get to that point mentally where you are. I'm still struggling with that one little piece. And I know you've worked through so many things in your life. And I'm truly honored and thankful to call you a very, very very real and close friend. I love you so much, Brandy. Thank you so much. I love you too. I love you. I appreciate you. And you know, when I do my seminars, our trainings, I say this and I'll end this with our audience. If you can hate for any reason, you can love for any reason. And I love you. I love you because you're you. And I love all the people who are listening. And I genuinely mean that from my heart. I love you. And if anybody needs help me, let me know. If I can, I will. Awesome. That's a huge send off. They say, I just say, how we used to say it in Dimpos. That's it for me. Reporting live, Brandy Vega out. All right, y'all. Please stay tuned, share, like, love this, and really get engaged with Brandy. She's totally genius. I'm going to drop the links down. And also, definitely, please, more importantly, go to Promise to Live. Just check out everything that she's done i co-sign i i just am totally thankful that you've had a chance to really spend some good quality time with me today so thank you so much for the way you show up thank you friend all right now y'all we will chat soon this is the mind's eye where we take top level performers and crawl into there to see what makes them tick thank you so much brandy thank you <laughs>